Hi, and welcome to uh, GDC. We're live here at the Developers Conference, and we're covering a number of game developer topics. My name is David Holliday, and I work with Azure Gaming. Today, I have with me Oliver. And Oliver, you have to forgive me. I can't pronounce your last name, so. <laughs> it's Oliver Loeffler. So. Loeffler, okay, yeah. great. German name. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, Oliver works for uh, the company uh, Fluffy Fairy Games. So, hey, can you tell me a bit about, like, your journey with Fluffy Fairy Games and a little bit about the company background? Yeah. So basically we started the company two years ago uh, in a small dorm room apartment. So we were still in college back then yeah. and we were playing a lot of games and we were really into it, um, experienced a lot of things and we really want to, wanted to try to do something similar, right? Um, so we just um, met in the dorm room apartment of two of our other founders and basically just started to build games. Nice. So um, at some point um, we decided to start uh, Idle Miner Tycoon and we wanted to get out a version of, of the game where we uh, out, on, out on the market very fast. So that's why we decided to only do like two months of development, get it on the market and see if it's working. Right. So. That's, so you're actually a true garage story, right? Yeah, right. You grew from, now you, you guys are pretty large. I mean, I don't mind how Tycoon has, like how many players of that game right now? Yeah, so we have like over 30 million downloads. 30 million? Yeah. Wow, that's a significant amount. Yeah. Now, I must say, I have to say, I'm a very big fan of the game. I just have to show you this for a second. I don't know if you can see this. For those who play Idle Miter Tycoon, I have unlocked all of my mines and all the islands. Just want you to know. I must say, though, it's really interesting is I got addicted to your game. Yeah. Uh, and I gave it to my family and some friends at work. And everybody is playing the game, and they're all addicted to it. Uh, it's fascinating to me. There's a number of things about this game that uh, are just fascinating, keep me coming back. And I love to kind of like dig through those and how you guys created that and the process for doing that, because I just find it amazing, the formula that you, you derived on. But just want to say, first of all, love your game. Man. Yeah, love your great. game. And, and look at that, look at that. So anyway. All right, so let's start with that because um, you said something before that when you start the game, you start with uh, just a, a minimal product. So yeah. can you explain the philosophy? Why would you do that? Yeah, so basically we did that because um, we wanted to know if the game is actually working out there. If everyone is looking for it, uh, if, if the uh, players are like it. And um, so we don't know this beforehand. So we, before we don't get our game out in the market, we can't really know if it will be successful. So that's why uh, we thought of getting a minimum viable product first, okay. get it on the market and see if anyone actually wants to play it. Gotcha. How do you figure out what that, that first set of things is? You just pick and then just keep testing it? Is yeah. that how it works? Yeah, so we wanted to have like the core gameplay mechanics first. So okay. we want to see if, if those are working because if we would add like a lot of content and the uh, core gameplay mechanics are already flawed, it wouldn't make any sense. So we really just wanted to know if those are working and so we decided to, to only focus on that. So we had like a lot of things in mind which we could add, but we really wanted to focus uh, on this core gameplay mechanic first and everything else could be added later. Very interesting. So when, when you realize you get that right, yeah. then how do you kind of pick the next set of features to add? Like how do you figure that part out too? Yeah. So, so once we release our minimum viable product to the market, so release it on Android and iOS, uh, we wanted to get like user feedback very fast because we didn't want to make a game for us as developers, but we wanted to make it for the users or for the players out there. Um, so we were encouraging the players for sending us emails. We were looking at the store reviews. Um, we also had social media channels uh, set up. So we wanted to try to get like a lot of feedback and then get the feedback back into the game as fast as possible. So that's why we decided to do weekly updates gotcha. and um, right. rolling out the feedback as fast as possible. Gotcha. So you're collecting feedback from a lot of different channels. Now, yeah. you, um, what technology uh, do you use, first of all, on the client developer side of the world? Yeah. Like, what do you use for that, for the game? Yeah. So we are using Unity. Unity. Uh, it's a game engine. Um, so we decided for this because it's like very accessible, it's easy to learn, and uh, we could make a fast prototype really quick. Also, uh, this was quite easy, and yeah, that's why we decided for Unity. 
uh, we're using C Sharp as a coding language and uh, Visual Studio mostly for a code editor. And yeah, that's basically what, what we're using to make our games. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, we love Unity, man. <laughs> we also love C Sharp, so. <laughs> that's um, good. So that's on the, the client side. Now, you uh, mentioned you also have other server-side technologies now. Um, yeah. What are you using on the server-side for it? So we are mostly using PlayFab. So it's a backend as a service provider. Um, and what we're using there, they're like predefined um, packages which we can use, which a lot of other games use as well. So you can think of um, uh, Cloud Save, for example, where mm -hmm. players can store their save game into Cloud and load it to other um, uh, devices. Uh, there are leaderboards, for example, uh, tournaments, and the whole economy can be built up in, uh, in PlayFab as well. Gotcha. So that's, that's the thing we decided to, to integrate to get like cool new features out very fast. Gotcha. So you're using PlayFab, and so PlayFab, uh, we just bought PlayFab. So yeah, right. Yeah, I think you know this. <laughs> hey, but uh, funny thing. But uh, PlayFab offers what they call live ops services. Yeah. And so have you, did you implement live ops from the beginning, or is this something that you added later? So at the beginning, we were mostly focusing on, uh, on the client features. Um, so we added more content. The players were requesting a lot of, of, of more content. They wanted to have more mines. Yeah. And, but at some point, um, we wanted to have something which is like uh, reoccurring like monthly, something special, very special. And that's why I decided then to, to integrate like uh, event mines. So these are mines which are um, scheduled like on a monthly basis currently and they have a very special theme. For example, we had recently a St. Patrick's Day event mine and um, yeah, so the players really yeah. love it because it's something very special and they get like special rewards out of it. Right. So the engagement is really high. Gotcha. And, yeah. and I noticed that too because I was playing and all of a sudden the, uh, the St. Patrick's Day mine yeah. appeared. Yeah. How do you do that? Like, is like how do you make that happen? Yeah. So basically, we do some uh, preparations like before the actual event mine starts. So we're doing a new update with like the graphics integrated and stuff like that. Uh, but because we have to time it uh, directly, uh, we schedule the time on PlayFab basically. Okay. So we can uh, type in the dates we want to uh, have the event mine live. And then it basically uh, starts a countdown. So we have like seven days before, uh, it's counting down and down, and then the event mine starts. So this is like completely on the server side. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so a lot of people talk about live ops, and you know, you've talked about it. Like, what is how would you know, how would you describe it to somebody? What live ops really is like? Yeah. So we see uh, live. So we have like two things on how we see live ops. So. Uh, we are doing weekly updates. We basically see this also as live op operations. So uh, we're getting in new content, uh, we're adjusting features. So we really see our game as a service, basically. Yeah. And then are the things um, which we occur like uh, on, 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 or which we can configure on the server side. So, for example, the event mines. Uh, we have several features like uh, our expedition feature, yes. uh, where we can adjust balancing on on the backend side. So we can uh, react to player feedback or to to a certain amount of players like. Uh, through the backend side before doing the client update. Oh, interesting. So uh, you can adjust parts of the game yeah. by changing the server side, but not, and that just kind of goes down to the client yeah, side. So, so basically, yeah, if okay. we, we do changes on the server side, uh, the players are affected immediately. Interesting, so, okay. Yeah. So you don't have to always push out a new version of the game, you can just feed it in from the server side. Yeah, that, right. So. so I can see some event. What are some of the things that enables you to do? I mean, I know you got your event mines and things, but has that changed the model for your development, basically? Um, yeah, so basically with that, we, uh, it, so releasing new update is always overhead. Of course, yeah. we optimize the step so that it's less overhead. But for example, if we want to say, OK, we want to start an event mine now. Yeah. We could do this by just typing in the date uh, into PlayFab and it would start now without like 
uh, doing like a whole new binary update, releasing it on the app stores, yeah. which takes time. So uh, with, with those live up features, we can just get it all right now. Gotcha, so that's very interesting. So you could react very quickly to a lot of users without yeah. having to do a major update. You do it on the server side. Yeah, true. That's super interesting. Can you uh, also tailor it to certain players, like some that are better than others, or you know, do you do that type of stuff too? Or? Um, so currently we're not doing this, but it's something we want to explore in the future. Yeah. So this could be very interesting. So because there are different players out there, um, they are like the very hardcore players, which play like... You mean like the good ones? Yeah, like you. <laughs> and they are like more casual players. So you can adjust the game like to the to, to each segmentation of the player. Gotcha. Yeah. So a different you know type of player, maybe who uh, spins more or is faster or better, you could target towards yeah. those players? Oh, that's very Yeah. So, so for example, one thing about event mines, so when a new player starts event mine, it took him a really long time. He really has to play a lot, but already a player who already played like for a very long time and progressed in the game, uh, for him, like event mine is much easier. So what we could do there is basically target different difficulties to the users uh, on ba based on uh, what's the progress in the game. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I would obviously get the hardest one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously, <laughs> right. So, um, that's super interesting. Um, yours is a game that uh, is one of the only ones that I actually am willing to watch advertisements. Yeah. Right. Um, the the way you've implemented that's genius. Um, if I come back and you know I'm going to collect some money, I could get double the money if I watch an ad, and I'm watching ads like crazy. I mean, is that <laughs> something you guys did deliberately? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we are focusing on that a lot. Um, so what we didn't want to do is like uh, show ads in your face even if you don't want it or have like some banner ads so basically it's you who decides on watching an ad yeah. um, so we want to offer some rewards for the ads yes uh, so players really love to watch those ads because they get more out of the game and can progress faster and don't have to pay any money yeah so um, that's that's why we decided to do those rewarded video ads and like players really request, so at the beginning we had like only one uh, ad network integrated into the game. Yeah. And if players watch a lot of videos there, um, they don't get any more. Uh, uh, and they were really like the players were really uh, writing us, hey, I want to watch more videos. Yeah, so, I listen, I'm like, yeah. if a video doesn't come up, I go, oh, I'm quitting. I'm going to come yeah. back and get a video. Right. Yeah. So, so we decided to add more ad networks to actually yeah. deliver a lot of uh, videos to the players. And so players really love it. So. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's one of the first games I'm willing to watch. Yeah, because you incent you the reward for watching just a quick 30 second is massive in the game. And, yeah. and it's totally worth it. That's great. Um, so let's shift gears a little bit about the kind of ongoing approach. So you start with a minimal product and you put some live up stuff in. Yeah. What's the kind of cadence of how or how fast you release new features? Yeah. Like how do you do that? Yeah. Uh, so, so we are doing weekly updates. Weekly? Okay. Yeah. Right. So um, we, the reason because we are doing this is because if, if players write us and they want something new or there's some bug or, or anything else, yeah. Yeah, they want to fix it immediately or want right. to have the feature immediately. So we really try to get out a minimum um, feature first uh, by doing this weekly update and you see uh, basically how the users react to it. Uh, because maybe we have like something different in mind what the users actually want. So by getting new updates very fast, we get to know if, if it's the right thing what we are developing for the uh, users. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. So it'd be a really small feature or part of a feature yeah. every week. Yeah, right. And then you figure out if it's working. Yeah, right. And oh, if it's working out, uh, we can expand this feature in the future yeah. as well. Okay. And when you uh, release, you're going for iOS and Android, do you target any one of those first versus the other one? Um, so what we are doing is a stage rollout. Uh, we are doing this on Android first because it's better supported there. Uh, so what we are doing there is uh, we only roll out a new version to a certain amount of players to test actually if, if there are any technical bugs or um, yeah anything which doesn't work out well. And um, then we see already uh, we already get some feedback from the users. Yeah. So okay. it would only affect a small user base first if we uh, made some mistakes and we could roll back it, uh, roll it back again. 
Um, yeah, so that's why we're targeting Android first to doing this stage rollout, and then we release it fully on both platforms at the same gotcha. time. Gotcha. So a small user base, you've got to be able to react quickly. Yeah. So you have something built into that to analyze all that, or you have analytics built into the platform for that? Yeah. So we have uh, different things uh, to measure those things. Um, so we have like a crash reporting tool where we actually can see like uh, technical issues very fast, even with a small player base. Right. Uh, of course, we have then uh, analytics where we can see like um, if players are engaging to certain features uh, or if like overall the high-level retention metrics, for example, are dropping or increasing. So we can already tell um, by rolling out if, if a new feature could work out. Great. And uh, you also have Azure as part of that back end, right? Is yeah. that right? So what's the uh, kind of general architecture of what that's used for? So it's PlayFab part of it, but then you have Azure as well. Yeah. Right? So we're using PlayFab more for, for new features and live ops and um, yeah, getting schedule new event minds, for example. Uh, but we're using Azure for analytics. Analytics? Okay. So, uh, what we do there is um, we send certain events from the game to our platform. For example, when a player do, uh, does a purchase or progresses into, uh, in the game. And uh, then we store it in a database and visualize it uh, with a BI tool. And therefore, we can look at, uh, at data very quick and like almost real time. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you can react so quickly. You can yeah. see exactly what's going on. Yeah. Gotcha. So using Azure Analytics there and some visualization tools yeah. you know, to analyze this. What's the kind of uh, scale of, like, I mean, 30 million users? Yeah. Like, what's the scale of the amount of events and things that are happening? So we are getting about 1 billion events per month. One which billion. Is, which is like month. really huge. And uh, Azure helps us with that because we can scale our databases and uh, the, the whole architecture based on the demand we are having. Yeah, wow, that's massive, yeah. that's great. Um, so you have Idle Miter Tycoon, and what's the next game you're working on? What, like, what's next for you guys? Yeah, so we recently started our second game, uh, Idle Factory Tycoon. Uh, we had like the uh, the same um, uh, same approach. So what we did there is only developing it for two months to get a minimum viable product. Yeah. Uh, we released it into soft launch in end of last year, and right now it looks really promising. We get like good KPI, good retention metrics, and we're gonna release it uh, end of April. Uh, gotcha. On a okay. Global commercial. And are you doing anything differently this time with that game versus um, the first one? So it's it's also an idle game. So it's uh, in the it, same. It just for just for the sake of something, what what is an idle game? Like, what's the style of that game? Yeah. So so basically, in an idle game, you are like more of a manager. So um, you can. So for example, I can explain a little bit about what Idle Miner Tycoon is. So if Idle Miner Tycoon, um, you have like your mining empire, and you you basically the game is working for you for your so, so you don't have to click on anything and stuff like that, but you're earning more money and you can respend it into the game. Yeah. And so you can level up your mine shafts, you can buy new mines and progress into the game. And also, what's uh, what's the crux behind this is that uh, that uh, the game plays itself, even though you're not yeah. uh, inside the game. Yeah. So if you tap out of the game and coming back in an hour later, you still get the uh, money which would the game generate. Yeah. I love that part because I'll set my little miners in motion in my empire, and then I'll yeah. go away, and I can just hear them working inside my phone, and then I come back, and I've got all this money. So yeah, right. yeah it's pretty quick in and out. I, I like the style of it. So. With the new game, it's kind of the generally same style. Yeah. Are you uh, starting with the live ops this time? Or are you going to go start with a minimal viable product? How, are you doing it differently this time at all? Yeah, so we integrated um, uh, PlayFab and our own analytics tool from the beginning. Okay. Because we already built up the tech and uh, we already have the knowledge with PlayFab. So it was quite easy to get it in our second game. So um, that's why we decided to already integrate to measure uh, like retention and uh, have like the ability to do live ops soon as well. Yeah, gotcha. So the back end that you've created already can be yeah. reused for the next game. Yeah. Oh, that's right. great. That's another advantage of the cloud. Gotcha. Okay. 
Um, one last question for you. Yeah. How are you enjoying GDC? What do you What do you think of this? Oh, it's awesome. There's so many people here. It's, it's really crowded and uh, having a lot of meetings, so it's really fun. Uh, it's a great, great conference. Yeah, yeah, it's good too, man. Hey, Oliver, thank you so much for coming on. I yeah, like, super enjoyed this. And here. I don't know if I pointed out, but I've unlocked all my minds. So, oh, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> no, hey, man, thanks for coming on. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks. So, okay, good. All right, and thank you all for tuning in today. And uh, this will be the last one of today. So join us back again tomorrow morning for some more. Thanks. All right.